with a free elite. This is this the correct way to start? I don't know. Just I just want my revenge. There was a dagger spray slightly before the gremlins fight. Would that have dramatically improved the gremlins fight? I'm not sure. Ooh, early face trader. Give me one of the bad faces, please. Dang it. We get this one every time. What the heck? Now I'm rich. Again. Bummer. No paper crane for us. Also bummer. Hmm. It's a cute dramatic entrance. Pretty hard to say no to bag of preparation, though. Double snipe no longer possible, alas. That's still fine, too. Let's go double bag. Many cards turn one. Makes for a good time. Makes for a really good time. Uh, might as well go this way, yeah? Nunchaku! Energy to go with card draw. You'd love to see it. We want a poison stab. We are fighting Hexaghost. We're gonna wanna actually we have a cultist potion. I already have a way to kill Hexaghost. Alright, I'll take an escape plan. Why not? And I guess I'll upgrade and neutralize. We need some better cards to upgrade, actually. Lantern to go with our immense card draw turn one. This is already going way better than the last rod did. Like, way better. Way, way better. We don't kill next turn. Not quite. Not unless escape plan hits Predator. Hmm. What situations call for not using both Endless Agony? Calculated Gamble. Also Lagavulin sometimes. Time Eater? Well, actually, against Time Eater, you really want to play them both because you don't want more of them. It's not a kill anyway, right? That's right. It would be with the Strength Potion, but only a 50-50, so not worth it. I think this is worth it, though. Hmm. Concerning. Very concerning. Oh, good. All right, we live, and with most of our health intact. All right, I guess we don't need to find better cards to upgrade. We can instead now remove more cards at rest sites. 
We have discard in this deck. No. Eviscerate is still very, very good for a deck with a peace pipe. I'm going to take Eviscerate. And upgrade Eviscerate. Apparently. Set up with escape plan? That is that is somewhat of a synergy. That's true. That's true. Oh, this next elite is gonna be so dead. Backstab with this many cards turn one, also pretty good. Just free damage. And it exhausts itself when you play it, so it doesn't kind of take up space in the greater deck. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. Kill you. Gotta overkill you. Quite a bit, unfortunately. I'll take it. Should have done the math there. I think I could have seen that I had to overkill. Let's slow this down a little bit. Would I like a starter upgrade? Neutralize, or a survivor up upgrade actually can be particularly good. We've already got neutralize upgraded here. It's already super powerful. Oh, and we can even play all of this. Thank you, Nunchaku. For the full block. Cool. Alright, take five. I am okay with take five, win the fight. Actually, going below 24 health prior to Hexaghost could be beneficial, as it'll lower the amount of damage the boss does on turn two. Jubal the Lion, thanks for four months of support. Heck yeah. Bronze Scales will assuredly help us against the Hexaghost. Piercing Whale, Nightmare, and Accuracy. Nightmare is quite curious. Don't have anything to Nightmare at the moment, but that could change, certainly. I'm gonna grab one Piercing Whale, going into Act 2. How do I feel about Power Potion versus the other stuff? Cultist Potion will kill Hexagos for us. I guess that's another reason to not play Endless Agony, right? Having strength gain per turn? It's kinda cool. Okay, let's ditch the Dex Potion, I suppose. I'll do it. I'll do it. And we get this fight. Hmm. Curious. Could just kill you outright. Better to focus on cultist here. Can actually just KO them turn one. I like that. Do it that way. Easy. Backflip's always welcome. Card draw. Prepared, however, actually makes the Eviscerate a lot more reliable and cheaper. So it might actually be better in this case to take a Prepared over a Backflip. We'd even want to upgrade that Prepared to say draw two, discard two, so that we can use the Eviscerate better. Yes, we should do that. Definitely. Call. Yeah, here's a situation where I may choose to discard the Endless Agonies so that we get more of them when we have more strength. But I think I'd rather just redraw into the Eviscerate, so I am going to play them.
And yes, on turn two, Hexaghost attacks for an amount right here. This, this damage right here is based on our current health. Here's the exact formula for, for you, courtesy of Bestiary Mod. Divider, H times six. H equals player's current health divided by 12 plus one. Rounded to the nearest integer. Very interesting little ability this boss does. Also got, yeah, that chat command there for the same calculation. Happy 0629, thanks for three months. Can I do a backflip? I can do mental backflips around my enemies, but rarely can I do an actual backflip in real life. Hmm. Pretty opportune time for Piercing Whale, don't we think? Sorry, Eviscerate, not today. Or today. Predator's Day. Three strikes and you're out. Next turn could hurt a bit. Hopefully we never die here. Hey, good. Take only one. And here's where we fail to kill Hexaghost in time, if it weren't for the additional strength of the Cultist Potion. But that one strength per turn, absolutely necessary for this deck to get through this fight. GG. Now we can buy a Wraith Form, a Doppelganger, or a Thousand Cuts. Not buy, but add. Add a Wraith Form, Doppelganger, or a Thousand Cuts. Definitely don't mind a Wraith Form here. A couple turns of intangibility buys us time to deal damage with our attacks. Also exhausts once played. Doppelganger can help us set up big, powerful turns. With more cards in hand. Would have been a Potion Miser and died. Yeah, you gotta respect Hexaghost. You really have to respect Hexaghost, uh, especially on the higher ascensions. It's not a boss that you can just kind of cruise your way through with just a good deck. It has to be a deck that specifically beats Hexaghost. I think Wraith Form Act 2 will make us a lot more survivable overall. I'm going to grab that. And I'm actually quite happy with a Cursed Key. Peace Pipe means we can get rid of any curses added just fine. Could even mean we end up uh, mastering a curse. Slaver's Caller would allow us to get all the benefits of the Cursed Key without having to take any curses. As long as we're willing to have reduced output in regular, non-boss, or elite fights, which is pretty reasonable as well. I think a Slaver's Caller is quite good here. We're already incentivized to take very few regular combats, because we want to look at as many event rooms as possible. And we already have a very strong turn one. Actually, the more I think about it, the more Slaver's Caller seems even better than Cursed Key. Sure, give me the Slaver Scholar. Let's do it. Gandalf Bond, thanks for 15 months of support. Also, we have 400 gold. Which is awesome. And we'll get a lot more if we go to some question mark rooms. Like, potentially a lot, a lot more. Makes something like this look kind of appealing. Oh man. There are some options. It's also the Burning Elite on the far right here, but I don't think I want to do that because there's no shops. Well, we could go here first and then, but eh, I don't like it that much. Green Path gets more events overall. More money. That's another 200 gold from the Serpent Head. This act alone. Pretty crazy. Could do a five question mark path, but we don't really need to do that. J 
chosen one. Hey, good job, Predator. Just hit them. Already a good start. So close. Beautiful, smooth fight. Acro plus. Absolutely. Oh yeah. That's a game changer. I know there's a second predator here, but acrobatics with a free upgrade on it is so transformative for what this deck can do. With the uh, eviscerate, especially. No way you'll convince me to not take it. How about a Wraith Form? I'd be convinced to not take a Wraith Form. I should just do it, especially with what's in the draw pile here. I'm gonna do it. Exactly. Played another strike. A little too greedy with the defend there. But that's alright. There's always a way. Useless. We can get eviscerate. We could do it, but we don't. Actually, with Nunchaku, this is exactly enough to kill. Hey. That wasn't too bad. Get another potion. Could offer to get another catalyst that we still don't want, because we've gone physical damage again. Expertise could maybe do something here, but. Eh. Let's hit the shop with a lot of cash. We are rich. Could have had two catalysts. Could have, should have, would it? Meal ticket could be pretty nice with uh, all of this money coming in. But what I'm eyeing at the moment is letter opener. Play three skills in one turn to do area damage. It's pretty substantial. Who's a rack boss? Collector. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Ah. Chemical X is a little bit tempting as Silent. Some very good X-cost cards on this character. Had we got Doppelganger, I definitely would be purchasing this. And of course we want to remove a Strike, for sure. Card removes are very, very good right now. <laughs> Mayhem's curious. Definitely some things we don't want to play at random. Backflip meal ticket remove? I could see that. I could definitely see that. I'm going to overpay for, uh, for the letter opener, is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to find some potions. I guess a strength potion is better than a power potion here. A bit more reliable in what it does. Get into a fight I wasn't prepared for. Fortunately, not too difficult to fight. Centurion plus Mystic. Not too bad if they're not both attacking your turn one. This is definitely falling under manageable. This Wraith Form next turn. Okay, I'll full block this. As long as you do enough damage to the Centurion, the Mystic will be stuck healing.
means you can just focus on the offense. Sometimes that works out really well, sometimes not quite so much. No, defend. Defend Eviscerate here. Actually, could have gone Acro Eviscerate if I wanted to. Now I'll play Wraith Form. Could even go Strike Wraith Form. I don't think I want to. Keep that one energy for next turn. Slow and steady wins the race, as they say. Here we go. There's our chance to kill Centurion. Well, perfect. Perfectly smooth. But work. But work and wraith form of kind of opposites to one another. But I do actually really like a footwork in this deck. We've got escape plan. We've got pretty good block density as we start toking more cards, which we're going to theoretically do at some point. I swear. We're gonna figure it out. But first things first, we gotta upgrade Wraith Form. Does the Mystic determine whether it heals at the end of your turn or the start of its turn? Start of its turn, yeah. So poison and thorns damage will, will count towards the decision making of Mystic. This is definitely enough money to go to another shop with. We get one less rest site, one less event, same number of reliefs. Okay, let's go green here. First up, Book of Stabbing. As far as the elites go, I think this is too early to play Wraith Form in this fight. This is a good fight for the Strength Potion, though. We're going to need a bit of uh, bonus damage here. Sustained over the course of the fight, rather than all at once, like we might want during the Slavers or Gremlin Leader fight. Really happy to see prepared in this hand. Means our Eviscerate is nice and free. Alright, let's discard Wraith Form then. I'd like to play Predator, which we can. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that's a very good turn one. Cursing Whale blocks next turn, and I think they're dead before anything else of importance happens. Looks good to me. Gah. Play the footwork just in case, just in case. This deck is doing very well. Letter opener damage has continued to be relevant. Really appreciating it so far. Another prepared. Unupgraded. Actually, might prefer the backflip now that we have dexterity. I'd prefer a card I don't have to upgrade so that I can instead toke something. So I'm going to take backflip here. And do I actually upgrade footwork or do I just start toking cards? I think we just start toking cards. Strikes be gone. Who's my favorite character and why? I tend to say the Defect is the answer to that one, Milka, because the Defect has the most different ways to build a winning deck. Every run with the Defect feels really unique to me. This is the wrong time to find Matrushka. Halt! Today is the day I must settle the score with the murderer of my beloved pet noodles. Till then, you may not pass. I'm all for a good cause, sir. Give me strength noodles. 
Plash. Plang pow. We lost the bet, but at least we weren't gouged by a lance. We were, however, gouged by a shelled parasite. So that's a problem. But only a slight problem. Let's do it like this. Oh no, 31 damage. One damage. Predator or Eviscerate? Better to Eviscerate. Strips more armor off, for one. Yeah, that seems good. Get obliterated, Parasite. Once again, let her open her damage, making the difference here. If weren't for that, then Strike Neutralize wouldn't kill. Really happy we bought this thing. So far it's been doing about 18 damage per combat. This is a run that could really appreciate Keltrops, actually. This card becomes a key damage portion for our late game. Help us tackle the hearts. In a deck that doesn't have a long-term damage solution. I'm going to grab Keltrops here. I think uh, Blur was also kind of decent there. But for the late game, we want those Keltrops. I can feel it. I can feel it. Cool. Alright, we got Acrobatics. There's Neutralize. Good. Just Neutralize, Keltrops, Predator. Enjoy, bird nerd. Enjoy. Setup plus. Put a card from your hand on top of the draw pile. Cost zero until played. Actually absurd with this Wraith form. Uh, or Reflex. If we discard this card from our hand, draw two. I think I think we follow the plus here. Setup plus is actually incredible with this Wraith form. We can put Wraith form on top of the draw pile and make it zero cost. Uh, or we can do the same thing with Predator. We've got lots of card draw effects that let us immediately draw to the card that we put on top. And it makes the letter opener slap even harder. I unironically love this setup. That's uh, not something I say often. I'm gonna keep toking cards with the peace pipe. The more we can get rid of, the better. The more work this uh, letter opener is gonna do as well. Ooh, do I backflip? Yes, because we can turn the backstab into a kill if I play three skills. Two, three. Perfect. All right, we can either play Predator or both powers. I'm going to go with both powers. The more things we don't redraw, the better. Put that on top. Get more energy next turn also. Yeah. Ha! I knew it! So stinky. Hmm. 
Where do we want this to go? Looks like I might prefer to play the Wraith form, actually. Can't play Wraith form and Predator, so it'd have to be this, right? Er, this. Yes, this. Play Wraith form. Play defend. Set up the Predator. We're actually hoping we get attacked by Grim Leader next turn. We'll still be intangible. Although the Sneaky Gremlin's gonna perish to the letter opener, or to the thorns, actually, which means we might as well play the letter opener too. Get some more damage in there. Hit me. Thank you. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Pretty cool. Courier is excellent, giving us a discount at the shop. And there it is. The almighty, all-powerful, all-incredible second upgraded setup card in a row. Obviously. Now we can set up setup. Yeah. I'm gonna take a card. Good talk. All right, collector seems like they might actually be kind of difficult here. It's a bit of a concern, but only a bit. Can always set up the wraith form, after all. And believe me, I will. Please. Could also consider just playing Piercing Whale, just get rid of every card that exhausts so that we can get down to just the most important essence of the deck, which is doing damage. Rapidly. If that's my next turn, we're all but guaranteed to play Wraith for him. Is that the smart time to do it? Hmm. See how this goes. Collector's not attacking us. Okay. It means Collector will attack us next turn, guaranteed. It means I think I just set up the Wraith form a second time. We draw it and play it next turn. That works for me. In which case, we can let the Thorns and the Letter Opener kill the Torch Heads for us. We're going to focus all of our attack damage on the boss. Although not this Neutralize. Yeah, this is too much to try to block. Double setup. The resetification. Do I want to set up anything? No, not really. All right, good talk. Here's the Mega Debuff turn, then we'll be immune to the, for the first turn after that. Which is 
quite nice. Set this up for letter opener. Thorns have now killed off the minions. Might actually get a resummon here. Nope, we got attacked. Perfect. Play the Predator. Keep drawing. Excellent. Hmm. That's not quite it, huh? All right, well, let's take one hit or use the distilled chaos here. I don't think we quite have a kill. Actually, do we? 18, 15, not quite, not quite. Pretty likely to get another potion here. Though hard to use the Sneko Oil in a way that's going to actually benefit the situation. Play set up first just for letter opener. Uh, the card that gets set up is going to be overridden by this effect, I believe. Actually, did it? Not sure. Might have just randomly been zero cost. Deeply, deeply unclear. Very, very, very deeply unclear. Either way, it got us the kill. GG. Good job, Sneko Oil. Now you're a duplication potion. And Venom. That's an interesting way for us to scale uh, damage here. I think a little redundant with Caltrops, but maybe beneficial. Or Thousand Cuts or Unload. I don't think so. I think we want to keep the deck small and efficient. Anything that lets us master setup, quite frankly, is going to be a success by me. Let's not add extra bloated cards. Instead, what if we got rid of some cards? Transformed and upgrade three. I don't really like Sneko Eye here with uh, two setups. Don't really like Busted Crown that much either. There's definitely some more cards we'd like to add. More card draw, especially. Another backflip, another acrobatics, anything like that. So I'm thinking transforming and upgrading three might just be okay. Although getting rid of three defends is kind of weird. Maybe defend, defend, endless agony, which is no longer serving us all that well. Skip. Skip our boss relic. I like the escape plan, because we have the footwork. Let's do defend, defend, agony. I like backstab more than I like endless agony. We get a second wraith form, a dagger spray plus, and a skewer plus. Cool. Second Wraith Form seems pretty good. Burning Elite Sandwich between two shops? How convenient. Actually, wow, three shops if we want it. Although with Courier, we really only need one. Um, this would be an amazing time to get offered 999 gold. Please? Please. Please make me rich. Hmm. Alright, let's set up the predator. This 
is within acceptable perimeters. I don't care that much about setting up Nunchaku for fights, but a little bit might, might be worthwhile. Just a bit. Finally, Sneaky Strike shows up. I think it's too late. We don't need more damage cards of this variety. Maybe, maybe another Eviscerate. Maybe. Oof. Um. Oof. Roy G. Biv, thanks for 10 months in the Prime sub. Thing is, I think those Caltrops might be really important. Like, really important. Like, more important than the uh, Predator is, for example. Yeah, we're gonna lose Predator here. For Heart, I can't afford to lose this Caltrops. It might be the only one we see. Playing Spire all day today? No, we're gonna switch games after this run. Although I'm not 100% sure what to, as of quite yet. Enjoy your thorns. Good fight. The herd set up. No, we want another acrobatics. Dagger throw is not too bad either, actually, but I think we want the acro more, because it increases the number of cards in hand. Very important with these setups. Very, very important. Mind me, just being intangible. A lot. Sex fun. It's genuinely fun. Set up back to back. Set up acrobatics are also pretty dang good. So once it's no longer investing in card draw this turn, you can invest in card draw next turn. Glorious. Another upgraded acro. There's also outmaneuver. So that's mostly for skewer, huh? I think we better take the acro first. And now things are gonna get pretty interesting here. Alchemize. Hmm. Art of War looks okay. Unceasing Top is really interesting. Huh. If you have no cards in hand during your turn, draw a card. The setups can definitely do some fun things with that. Very intriguing. Could also just remove oodles of cards from the deck. Kind of down to get rid of Skewer. Metamorphosis, I like it. 
Honestly, this is a pretty good card for this deck. Can we empty our hand? Sometimes. Only sometimes. With the acrobatics, it becomes more and more unlikely. It's also very expensive, right? I am going to buy Art of War. I am going to remove Skewer. <laughs> Although, hold on. A lot of events. Upgrades are pretty good. I'd like to upgrade Footwork, Acro, and again, we can just toke cards. So maybe we want to spend our money on something else than removals. Potions are good enough that Alchemize really doesn't seem that appealing to me. And so is the deck good enough that I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to not buy anything here. We are going to go to another shop momentarily and look for some better stuff. Just have to beat Giant Head. Surely that's not too difficult, right? Yeah, the prob. Perfection. Set up this Wraith Worm, set up this Acrobatics. Oh boy, gonna have a good turn next turn. I'm intangible, and you can't do anything about it. Get wrecked. Keep drawing. More. good for a first turn. We have uh, five more turns like that. I'm sure we can figure it out. Nerd. Ornamental Fan gives us block for playing three attacks in one turn. We do that often enough. How about a Calculated Gamble Plus? Discard our whole hand and draw that many cards again. That sounds pretty sweet to me. 
I like it. All right, shop number two. What do you contain for us? The Abacus. Whenever we shuffle the draw pile, gain six block. Grand Finale. We have no cards in the draw pile. We can deal 50 to all enemies. Those are pretty spicy. Panacea to go with the Wraith Forms. Also a thing. Ooh, I like that Panacea. Panacea later. Man, some fun options here. I think we might be able to avoid Finale. Yeah, we're gonna avoid Grand Finale here. This ain't it. This ain't it. We are going this way now. Oh yes. It's gonna be good times. So, the Abacus. When we shuffle the draw pile, get six block. And... Gain one artifact. And remove a card. Skewer. And then we stop. One more shop coming up. Take it. No Keltrops yet, huh? Here, set up the Ascender's Vein. Crawl into it. Perfect. No downside rate form. Easy peasy. Art of War Squeezy. About to get burns, which could be fairly bad for us. So our goal is to do as much damage as possible before uh, burns arrive. Five turns of intangibility can be pretty hard to do anything of consequence to us here. We can still do damage one at a time, even if it's not a lot. It adds up to a lot. I'll just find a good damage card and use setup. There we go. Set up the Eviscerate. That's a kill. Beautiful. Pentnip doubles the damage of every 10th attack we play. I think a second escape plan is actually pretty good here. If we wanted more damage to a single target, we could take Bouncing Flask. That'd be a sort of a desperation pick if I'd lost Caltrops to the falling event. But I'll take the escape plan pretty happily. I'll take the Smiling Mask pretty happily. Meaning that Carter moves are only 50 gold at the final shop. And I'm going to recall pretty happily. Then we get to Elite Fight, Remove, Elite Fight, Combat, Remove. With the next Elite being Reptomancer. Repto can definitely provide a hard time. Yeah. 
Seeing now why I bought this letter opener a long time ago? It was well worth the money. It's crazy good. Just chunking away. Lots of wounds definitely slow us down. Be nice if we could find the medical kit as one of our final um, shops. Or just any way to deal with status is a little bit better. Forty-one per combat, dang. Get him. Bag of marbles makes enemies vulnerable, turn one. Second eviscerate or a well-laid plan to retain stuff. Please let me retain stuff. Holy heck. That sounds real nice like. And rather than removing, I'm actually probably going to upgrade Well-Aid Plans and Panacea, and then eventually Keltrops, too. Let's do Panacea first. Lock both Wraith Forms, rather than just one. Seems good to me. Keep plan, piercing land. Keep the wreath form, I guess. Maybe pen nib and eviscerate here for a bit of damage. Not quite. Play it one time then. Good enough. Set up a setup. For five damage. Get back to this right here. Hands up. Get a boat thingy for block on turn one. Get offered another backflip. A skewer or backstab. Personally, I'll take another backflip quite happily here. Just one more. Block and draw is a pretty good thing. Better believe I'm just going to set up Wraith for him. No ifs and or buts about it. It's going to happen. Hey, 
Flares Eviscerate. Letter opener, this is your job now, too. Aww. Keep that, I guess. You can play the Panacea after the Wraith form, and it'll block a number of turns of decks down, but definitely better to play it first rather than second. Better opener strikes again. Set up. No thanks. No thanks. I'm here to win with two setups, and that's good by me. Two setups and an upgraded well laid plans. Guess that footwork's never really getting upgraded. Maybe I need to dupe it though? I think with two wraith forms, I don't need to. Although, time meter could be tricky. We can't just play the wraith forms against time meter. We need to weaken time meter substantially. That's what we need to do. Can set them up though, that seems just fine. I guess I don't need to set them both up. Let's just go whale, Peltrops, set this up. Keep these two cards, keep these two cards. Initial goal is just to avoid losing health while whittling down the time eater here. I'm setting up a sweet Ben nib. Time Eater chooses to do here, we may or may not have an easy time of this. Thirteen by three in my defense block for five? Seems to me like we might need to go Wraith Form here. With six turns of intangibility, I guess I don't see why not. I 
can even time the second grouping maybe a little bit better. Maybe. Good. Not debuffing me. We'd like to get time meter below half health essentially as quickly as we can. Acrobatics, then. Keep this and this. Don't do anything here. Foolish. And if we can delay using the Wraith form, that would be an advantage to us. Looks like we probably can. This is only 42, right? Yeah, easy. Easy peasy. Although, bonus points if I can... Get some other stuff done here. Oops. Worked out. Don't ignore that thorns damage. It's uh, pretty deadly. But now it's time to be intangible again. Cards. Set that up. Alright, this looks pretty promising. We have two more turns of intangibility with which to damage Time Eater. Time Eater's choosing to be a fool. Allowing us to sneak in more attacks here. A lot of slimes, though. Set up the acrobatics. Easy. This and this. Letter opener. We believe. You got this. This is your fight. GG, Time Eater. GG. Alright, one boss down with very little difficulty there. Next one is Donu Deka, who I expect will be even less difficulty. These bosses don't really do anything too fancy, just asking us to have pretty good output consistently each turn. And with the bonus damage from the letter opener, I don't think we're going to have too much difficulty overall. Discard back stab there. Why not? Why the heck not? We want to kill Donu first here. So I'm pretty sure we do. Uh, no, not like that. Set this up. Draw. Wrong order of drawing. 
okay. Uh, discard these. Wrong order of attacking, too. Still okay, though. Success! Despite how awkward and weird that turn was. I'll not question it. I liked it. There we go. Some proper damage. Set up. Scamble. Again, for blocking purposes. Play this also for blocking purposes. There we go. We got rid of some exhausting cards. We added more, of course, but what can you do? What can you do? Was this fight to kill Deca first? Potentially. Honestly, I really don't think it matters here for us. But yeah, potentially it was. Just gonna play this. Got plenty of time now. Don't need to overthink this anymore. Seven damage per combat. Dang. There's some damage output right there. Thorns. Deca, don't you? Both of you. Get spiked on. Gimble ball. All of it, I tell you. This letter opener has our back. Easy. He's a beezer. Hmm. That one guy, Carson, did you hear about the worker who was hired to guard the mail? They were fired for abandoning their posts. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt out of the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all this opened mail. 824 damage from this letter opener. Holy crap. The power. 60% eviscerate, 35% letter opener, and 5% thorn says snow sue sheep. Well, the thorns are about to put in some big work in these final battles. 
In fact, we're going to upgrade Caltrops prior to these final battles. Already got double will aid plans. Okay, okay. Could take another prepared. Pantograph could be nice. Card remove looks pretty good. Second well-aid plans doesn't seem that important. Card remove seems good. I could buy Jack of all trades, maybe hoping to find the second panacea, but that's a bit of a stretch. Have we mastered hand drill? Yes. I'll buy Jack of all trades. It's blind. I need more weakness. I think the one uh, neutralize ought to be enough. Okay, any better potions? No? Okay, let's not mess with our deck then. I can buy this. Oh, Sundial, son of a... <laughs> Dang it, Sundial. Dang it. Excellent turn one. We drew Panacea, which means we get to Wraith form to our heart's content. This fight should be easy peasy. Let's get another zero cost skill. I suppose that alone is pretty worthwhile. Right for the moment. Artifact. Just play this. Let's stop more of those thorns from appearing. That'd be. Or more of those burns, excuse me, from appearing. That'd be pretty helpful. Card gone. Spear's almost dead, at least. We've got them soon here. There we go. Cool. Alright, 1v1 against shield should be no issue here. I didn't buy the strawberry with the sundial it'll appear after the elite. No, shops, uh, relics in shops are pulled from a different part of the relic list than uh, regular relic drops are. So no, in this case. Another duplication potion. Two dupe pots is better than the distilled chaos, I think. Being able to duplicate two cards during this art fight is going to be a huge difference. I guess one more prepared ain't bad. Help us cycle through the deck a little bit better. 
We don't need either well-laid plans or dodge a roll. Probably going to duplicate our caltrops, genuinely, as well as maybe one of the wraith forms or the footwork, depending on how we feel. But the caltrops is definitely going to be one of the duplications here. I don't think we bother to block vulnerable, right? We just keep the panacea in our hand. Can double dupe pot make caltrops three times? No. If you drink them both, it'll be your next two cards that get uh, duplicated. What are you? Trip. Hmm. Actually kind of helpful. Okay, there's caltrops. And there's Pennib Eviscerate. Perfect. That's some slappage right there. So we're gonna go Duke Pot, Double Caltrops, Trip. Deliberately get hit by the debuffs. Don't use Panacea yet. Now we have 13 thorns, by the way. Here's Wraith Form. So I'm just going to go... Panacea, Wraith Form, Backflip. Take three damage. And I think that'll probably be it. I could dupe pot the Wraith Form if I felt the need. I don't currently feel the need. Also just tank this hit in Piercing Whale next turn. Good for thought. It is going to be pretty hard to block this. It's okay, we've got health. I think it'd be a waste to use the Piercing Whale here. So I shall not. Okay, we know the top two cards are now skills. I can play Escape Plan. And let's just gamble here. Thank you, Abacus. So we can find that void again. There it is. And two setups. Just keep Wraithform set up then. So we do 13 by 15 damage in retaliation here. A full 195. Back to the heart. That is pretty sweet. Set this up. Play this. And the rest don't matter, I guess. Keep Gamble Whale. Okay, multi hit is first. And we can Piercing Whale it. Perfect. Trip neutralize, removes the artifact layers. Piercing Whale blocks. So let's do that. Backflip. Keep Wraith Form Escape Plan. We'd like to try to block traditionally next turn. So that we can keep the Wraith Form for one more cycle. I guess we can also just dupe pot the Wraith Form at this point, and it's pretty impossible to lose. I'll keep this one uh, dupe pot though, why not? Let's see how well we can do here. Peasy. Abacus, get in there. Perfection.
Good luck, Mr. Hart. It's good luck. GG. Get spiked on. Now that's what I call a sharp use of strategy. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.